I have a question for all of you who believe in this Roman Catholic Trinity concept. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're not, God is not the Father, or the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is not the Father, the pagan triangle thing there. i um, got a question for you. Is God the Father in a Christian's body? Turn in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. Um, if you're not aware of this argument, those of us that believe the King James Bible as it's written, we believe in the Godhead. That's the Bible word. And that is three in one. Okay? That's what it is. God the Father is the soul. Jesus Christ is the body. And the Holy Ghost is obviously the Spirit. Okay? Those three are one. They can separate separate, and things. And it's the mystery of the godliness. We look at that and we go, okay, I don't quite understand that. The Bible says great is the mystery of godliness. We're not going to quite understand it in this life. But it's what the Bible teaches. And I've talked about all the scriptures back and forth and everything else. The Catholic Trinity people, on the other hand, they believe that there are essentially three different gods. Jesus Christ has a body, soul, and spirit. God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit. And the Holy Ghost has a body, soul, and spirit. And they, those three are one in the sense of one in agreement in divine essence. Okay? And they invent all kinds of words that do not appear in the scriptures to justify their teachings. And their favorite little triangle thing, God the Father is not... The Son, the Son is not the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is not. They have to invent that thing. Okay? And it appears nowhere in Scripture. But ask the question. Is God the Father in a Christian? Let's look about this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Stop right there. Uh, there's a lot of ones there, not three separate ones that are one in purpose. So you got to get, get all philosophical and things like this to try and prove this Roman Catholic Trinity. And since when should Bible-believing Christians go to the Roman Catholic Church to prove anything? Verse 6, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, uh-oh, and in you all. In you all. God the Father is in you as a Christian. Keep your hand right there. Just put your thumb right there on the page and turn over to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so, be, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. What is the Spirit of God? Well, see, as a Bible-believing Christian, I would say, okay, that's the Godhead. The Spirit of God is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit there. Not a problem. But if you're a Catholic Trinity believer, then you have to say, well, that's God the Father's Spirit. Okay, because there are three different spirits there. God the Father's spirit, Jesus the Son's spirit, the Holy Spirit's spirit. <laughs> He's two spirits, apparently. But let's continue. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Wait a second here. So, you have to have the spirit of God and the spirit of Christ, apparently, if you believe in the Catholic Trinity. Because they have two different spirits. Am I right? Catholic Trinity people? They have two different spirits. They each have their own body. They each have their own soul. They each have their own spirit. But see, as a Bible-believing Christian, I can look at this and I can say, the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, Christ is God. You see? You say, well, that's just talking in context about God the Son there. Where does it say that? They have to invent this thing that doesn't appear anywhere in Scripture. Nowhere does the Bible say God the Son. Nowhere. So there's no problem if you're a Bible-believing Christian. You look at this and you say, well, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, it's the Holy Spirit. Not a big deal. One Spirit. 
Okay? Verse 10, And if Christ be in you, wait a second, I thought it was the Spirit of Christ. And over, over here in, in Ephesians chapter 4, it's God the Father is in you. Huh? You so you got you've got four now. We got four: the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ, Christ in you, and God the Father in you. That's four. Or if you're a Bible believing Christian, you say it's all one and the same. Just one. Like it says over there in Ephesians chapter four: one body, one spirit. But over here it says there's two spirits: the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ. Hmm. Romans chapter 8, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Hmm. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Hmm. How does that work out? King James Bible, brethren, teaches that God, the Father, is in you in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6. God, the Father, is in you. And yet, over here, in Romans chapter 8, Christ is in you. The Spirit of Christ is in you. The Spirit of God is in you. And obviously, in context there, you know, if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost. Then you can go all throughout the Scriptures and look and see where the Holy Spirit's in you and, and the Spirit of Christ and everything else. How many spirits do you have in you? Um, well, over there in Ephesians chapter 4, it says, one spirit. Um, if you listen, you can hear the Catholic Trinity believers Weeping, wailing, and gnashing their teeth. And if you listen again, they can you can hear their fingers typing nasty comments. That happens a lot with my videos. <laughs> um, brethren, you ought to just read the King James Bible and believe it. Okay? Jesus Christ is God. You say, well, how can he be God the Father and God the Son? Or, you know, God the Son, yeah, that's what they would say. How can he be God the Father and it's the Son and and you the Holy Spirit and all at the same time and he's praying to the Father and that it's called the mystery of godliness and it's great. And I just cracks me up all these times, these Catholic Trinity people and they're going, This is basic Bible doctrine. This is so easy to understand the Trinity. It's just so easy. Uh well then it's not the Godhead of the Bible. Because the Bible says great is the mystery of godliness. If it's easy to understand, then you're not dealing with the God of the Bible. Be very careful what you believe, brethren. And be very careful who you are listening to. Right? If you're saved, you're going to see these scriptures and you're going to submit to it. You're going to say, yeah, that's what the Bible teaches. I don't quite understand God and how that whole thing works out. But you know what? It's what the scripture says. I'm going to go with what the scripture says. Not with what the Catholic Church teaches or the council of such and such or whatever else. Stand by the Bible. 